all right. It's okay. It's okay. On this episode, he does need to go from out of the cab and into the clinic. A most unusual consult for Scott on a London street and the chance meeting that will touch everyone's heart. I'm never going to leave you. Hey, did you eat a sock? Never a dull moment in emergency as Alex deals with a mischievous pooch and a new mum in trouble. At this stage, we can't really tell whether or not the puppy's alive. She's lying there, hardly moving and hardly breathing. And Jacqueline urgently needs to find out what's wrong with bearded dragon, Zaki. And there's every risk that she could crash and pass away at literally any moment. Are you kidding me? You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. At Sydney's small animal specialist hospital, Sash, emergency vet Alex has a patient with unusual tastes. Oh, so it looks like we have a dog here that's potentially eaten a sock, so I'm just going to head out and see Levi. Joanna and her son Marcelo can't believe Levi's bizarre taste for footwear. It's horrible. It's like, oh, no. The first thing I did was just Google to see if it's even possible that a dog can swallow a sock, and apparently it is. Hi, Joanna, and this Hi. must be Levi. It hey, is. Hey, buddy. Hey, did you eat a sock? <laughs> okay, so would you like to come through? As an emergency vet, we see a lot of trauma and a lot of complex conditions, and unfortunately also things that happen suddenly that people aren't expecting. Okay, come on in. Do you know how long ago that um, happened? So probably now a good hour. Not 100% sure that he has swallowed it because okay. I didn't see him actually do it. So you're just missing a sock or do you think... That... He had the sock, he was oh. playing with a sock, he was on the bed so there's no way that the sock could have disappeared but it has. Mm -hmm. And he was sort of gagging a little bit. So at this stage because it's only just happened, it's probably just sitting in the stomach and we okay. might be able to get away with making him vomit. We give right. him an injection of a medication that makes him vomit. Okay. Uh, and hopefully it'll come up which will save us all a lot of headache. Okay. <laughs> So if Levi ate a sock, that sock can leave the stomach and cause a blockage in the small intestines. And in which case, if it's not addressed surgically, it can be life-threatening and it can be fatal. Here we go. We've got a smorgasbord of a few different types of food. Does he mm. like fish? Yeah, he does. Yep. He likes salmon. Usually having a bit of food in the stomach helps so that when we give the injection to make them vomit, they have something to bring up. And it's easy to come up being a sock. That's the tricky part. Sometimes it doesn't come up. Almost there. Alex hopes the medication will take effect before the missing sock moves into dangerous territory, the young dog's intestines. Look at that, <laughs> yummy. Okay, Levi, come on, let's go meet some people. We adore him. He's kind of, I guess you could say, the glue that's kind of brought the family together. He's really bonded us all in, in a different way. But I just don't like the idea that he's going to not feel very well. But before Alex can give Levi his injection... I'll just put this dog in a cage for a second. She has another pressing emergency. So we've just got a dog that's delivering a puppy right now. So I just need to take the puppy out so that we can try and help resuscitate. So we're just going to come through. The puppy is stuck in its mother's birth canal and could die unless Alex can deliver it immediately. Bring a bit of a blue colour. Oh, I know. There's not a lot of room in here, is there? It's the start of a busy day at the Bird and Exotic Animal Clinic in Melbourne and Nurse Alicia is bringing in Jacqueline's first patient. Alrighty. Hello. So this is Zaki. She's come in today because she's been losing weight rapidly and has laid three lots of eggs back to back. So the owner's quite concerned. She's not herself. All right. Cool. Hi, sweet pea. Oh, darling. Zaki the bearded dragon is not looking great right now. She's a very sad lady. Her whole body is to the ground like a pancake. And that tells me that she's feeling really poorly. All right, sweetheart. Hi, baby. 
are very skinny and quite dehydrated looking at all these skin tents. I worry any time an animal comes in and they're really flat like that because you know that if they were happy and healthy they'd be running around climbing up the walls just about and so as soon as you see an animal like Zaki who would normally be that bouncy kid and she's lying there hardly moving and hardly breathing you know things are, are not going well for them. Oh sweet pea. She's so skinny. Every animal that looks that flat and sad is doing so for a reason and there's every risk that they could crash and potentially pass away at literally any moment. Hi, may I have a look in your mouth? No. Nope. No. That's a no thank you paw. <laughs> no bad vet. Alrighty. We'll have a feel of her belly. As I'm examining Zaki, I can see that she's very quiet. She's not responding much to my touch. As I'm working my way down her belly though, she's starting to really tense and arch her back and puff up her belly, which is a sign of pain. Oh, that's a bit sore, Munchkin. So she's reacting a lot to that, so something's very uncomfortable in there. And, aha. So if you have a feel about there, Alicia, it's a little oval structure, about Owies. just over a centimetre long. Feels suspiciously like an egg. And uh -oh. given that she's laid, what, three clutches in the last couple of weeks, I would be very worried that she's had a, an extra egg that's held itself in there, and now it's making her pretty sick. Anytime you have an egg that stays inside the body, it's getting warm. And so if that egg becomes rotten while it's still inside of Zaki, that's a huge risk to her. She's a very sad lady. In London, Scott's on a special mission. I'm here in central London, in Trafalgar Square, and it always is cool when you come to a place like this and you feel like a tourist. But more importantly, I'm here to help DOTS, which is Dogs on the Streets. They're an amazing charity that work with homeless people and their dogs. Hi, Michelle. Hello. Hello, my love. Hello. <laughs> um, so, busy day, you expecting? Yes. Yes. Lots of doggies already um, lining yeah. up for your services. Yeah, yeah, there has been quite a lot. Such an amazing thing that you do, and I, I just love helping out. And, you know, I've got my stethoscope. Brilliant. I'm ready to go. Right, let's go. Let's go and see some doggies. Let's do it. All right. Scott's first patient is Taser. Hello, handsome. Hello, handsome. How are you doing? Now, he needs his monthly injection. Yeah. 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 All right, sweetie, ready? Oh. Brave boy, brave boy, ready? Oh, you're so, you're so good. All right, well, glad to help you out today. And you, sir, we're doing a very good service out here. Oh, thank you. Oh, no. Hello, who have we got oh, here? Ashkit. No. Oh, cute. <laughs> Many of these owners have no home, but they have hearts full of love for their four-legged oh, companions. <laughs> so good, baby. <laughs> Absolutely crazy, hectic, busy afternoon. There's been so many dogs just coming out of the woodwork. It's incredible. Then up came a black cab. Hi there, Chris. I'm Scott. How are you? I'm good. Good. Nice Thank to meet you. Scott. Nice to meet you too. And who's Happy. this handsome chap here? This is Tiberius. Hello, Tiberius. I've got one more, which is a bit more worrying at the moment. I've got 11 year old. Okay. Half staffy, half, half presser. Okay. That's had some issues with his limbs and lameness over oh, the okay. last 24, 40, 38 hours. Right. Um, he hasn't eaten for about 24 hours. Inside the cab was a, a very sick looking older dog called JC. It's a little bit really oh, it's a sore elbow. Sore elbow. Okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. This one means everything to me. This one's like my child. Like, so I was actually suffering from social anxiety, really bad social anxiety and panic disorder. Yeah. And it was my GP that suggested to maybe try and see if I can get myself a dog. Um, yeah, he's got me through the last 10, 11 years of a lot of bad, you know, they're both, if I didn't, I don't know what I would do if I, if I didn't have them. I don't know. Literally, always, yeah. by my side, it's just, I just don't, just thinking about it, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I would do. I, I just, it's all right. 
At this stage, we can't really tell whether or not the puppy's alive. Oh. At Sash in Sydney, emergency vet Alex is desperately trying to deliver a puppy wedged in seven-year-old Pomeranian Lily's birth canal. It is stuck and it has its legs flipped back, which makes it a little bit harder because the shoulders are too big to pass through. Every moment that this puppy's stuck is a risk that he might be losing oxygen, so we need to try and get him out as quickly as possible. I think you have to be a certain breed of vet to be an emergency vet, like an adrenaline junkie, I guess. Mum push. We've got high emotional situations where an animal is rapidly deteriorating. The shoulders are stuck, so I need to put my hands inside and try and flick the legs forward. I can feel puppy moving. We've got a puppy out and looking a little bit pinker and starting to move and make some noises. We have to get all the fluid out of the lungs as well. I don't say anything until we yes. hear squealing. <laughs> yeah. There you go. We've got some nice noises coming out now. Good girl. So I've been an emergency vet for about six years now. It's challenging and it is a lot of emotions that go through emergency. So you, you do go on a roller coaster ride every single day. That's your baby. She's a good mummy. Alex has saved the lives of Lily and her newborn baby boy. You helped, you're a good girl. There are certain emergencies that we need to make a, an instant decision and in that situation, any time that there's, there's lack of oxygen to any animal, it's a medical emergency and we need to act immediately. I drop everything and I, I, I immediately act on that situation. But before Alex can get back to Levi, Lily has started giving birth to a second puppy that's also stuck. It looks a bit of a blue colour as well. And in danger of dying. Hey, Mum, it's okay, it's okay. Just have a little listen. Oh. In London, Scott is volunteering with Dogs on the Streets, a charity helping the homeless to care for their much loved pets. He's been a bit of an unwell chap. Chris has just rushed in by cab with elderly dog JC. Friday he was still okay. He was just he had his normal, you know, old 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 dog limp. Yeah. But then Saturday morning when I woke up to try and take them out, he would he wouldn't get up. So yeah, I can see he's quite yeah. lame on that right four, isn't he? Yeah. Okay. So for the moment, what I think is that he is quite painful. The pain is driving his fast breathing and fast heart rate uh, and also with significant pain if you've ever felt it before actually you don't feel very hungry um, and it really does depress that appetite so um, I do think he is in discomfort he needs to be looked at a little bit closely in, in a, a veterinary context um, hopefully you, uh, you'll join me at Richmond Hill and we'll get both the dogs looked absolutely, at absolutely absolutely we'd love to come to Richmond Hill Chris's other dog Tiberius is also due for desexing so he'll be joining JC when this close-knit trio heads to Scott's practice for much-needed treatment. We just need to understand it a bit more, so that's why he does need to go from out of the cab and into the clinic. Yeah. Tomorrow I will be assessing the two dogs, but for JC it's going to be a day of discovery, just understanding what's going on and how we can best treat it. And I hope it's not too bad because honestly, I don't know how Christopher will cope. Eggs are not supposed to stay inside the body when they're fully formed. At the Bird and Exotic Animal Clinic in Melbourne, Jacqueline fears an egg could be stuck inside bearded dragon Zaki, making her extremely unwell. Oh, stings! Rude! Okay. Stingy, stingy, my love. I know. Jacqueline's first priority is to give the little reptile some pain relief. 
let her pain relief kick in and hopefully she'll feel a whole lot better. I like that we've gone from a no thank you poor to happy to hold my hand. <laughs> as happy as she can be when she feels so bad. <laughs> All right, let's take her in for an ultrasound. Let's go little lady. The ultrasound lets us have a look internally what's happening within her ovaries and her cell things. So that's the equivalent of a uterus in a bearded dragon. Oh, rude. Bit cold. So we're going to put the uh, alcohol on there just to fill in the air gaps between the scales. Otherwise we can't actually see when we ultrasound. Good kid. Where is it? So my, that's that one. All right, so that black there is fluid and that white reflective bit is going to be the shell. And that is a mature egg, which should have left last week when its friends did. It should not still be hanging out in here. Good boy. Good boy. In London, Chris and his four-legged companion Tiberius are on their way to reunite with Scott at his Richmond practice. However, a key member of their family is missing. So the vets were actually quite shocked to, to find out that JC had um, cancer of the spleen. The cancer had already moved to the kidneys and I, yeah, I just broke down. I, just, I begged for about an hour to, to try, you know, if they could do anything else, but at the end of it, I looked down at JC and he looked me straight in the eyes and as soon as he did that, like, it was just like to say, it's okay, like. And I just, from me going to, can you do something, to, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm all right. Despite his grief. Slowly. Good boy. Chris is keeping his scheduled appointment with Scott for Tiberius's routine desexing. You are such a lovely boy. And Chris, can I give you a hug? Yeah. So sorry about JC. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I know how much he meant to you, and I know how he really helped you get through a lot of a lot of mm -hmm. tough times. So uh, that's a, that's a big loss, I'm sure. It was a partnership more than anything and it's like the biggest thing that I think that he's taught me is throughout the whole time that I had him I've always been saying you know I miss the company of a person I need you know I need some companionship I need some affection that kind of thing and like I only realized after JC went that I already had it it just wasn't in a human form we're going to take you downstairs and we're going to let you be through the whole process because oh, I know you have a close bond and I know how um, what a wonderful doggy dad you are. So, excellent. all right, oh, thank you. Come on, follow excellent. me. Let's come go on, big fella. Let's, let's go. go. Come on, let's go. Good boy. Let's go. Good boy. One of the great skills of being a vet is you do need to not only look after your patient, but you do need to show some care and some kindness to the owner as well. For me, it seemed only right to try and keep Tiberius and Chris together. So we just need to be a little bit careful. That's why we've got Chris here, yeah. just to make sure he behaves himself. Yeah, no, he, he's, because he's got a little bit of um, separation anxiety. And yeah. as soon as I disappear for some reason, he's, he goes a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So just know that we're here. We, we all know what we're doing. We've worked together for a long time. So there's, there's nothing to worry about. Okay, we just go do it calmly. And the calmer you are, yeah. That's the calmer what I'm he'll trying, be. <laughs> I've been trying to work. Channel. Yeah, I've been trying to do that all morning. Yeah. There you go. Nice and strong and slow. That's, That's just nice. as I expect. Okay. Hey, yeah. Good boy. Overwhelmingly, it was a positive thing that Chris was downstairs with us just as we're getting Tiberius anesthetized and ready for surgery. Because this is a big, powerful dog, and if he's anxious as well, he's going to be really difficult to handle. Oh, you're a strong boy. Pick up. He's you. okay. He's okay. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Daddy's got you. Good boy. It's also stuck at the shoulders. 
so it looks a bit of a blue colour as well. At Sash in Sydney, Alex is desperately trying to save Lily's next baby, after the tiny mother's second life-threatening birth in just a few minutes. Oh. Hey mum, it's okay, it's okay. I'm helping. This one I'm very concerned about because I can see the back feet are already looking a blue colour and they're starting to be a bit swollen and cold. Can you get the table ready? Oxygen. Some more swabs. It's not breathing. Come on, puppy. Lily's owners Kim and Tuan are waiting anxiously for news of their beloved Pomeranian. I hope she's all right. The vet said first boy breathing now, so I am happy for that. And can someone, sorry, can someone just take mum back? Hi, honey. Alex has managed to deliver Lily's baby daughter and is now frantically trying to resuscitate the newborn pup. There we go. We're getting some bit of breast now. I wasn't breathing and wasn't making any attempts to try and breathe. There we go. That's the noise that we want. And looking a lot pinker now, so I don't think we need that oxygen anymore. So we'll be able to go back to mum now and she can do the rest for us. Sometimes it takes puppies a while to get going and unfortunately sometimes they, they don't make it. So you've got to have a caring personality to be a vet and you've got to love animals because that's what keeps you going and that's what you strive to see at the end is it's the outcome and happy pets and happy owners. <laughs> hey Lily, you're such a good mum. Good, oh thank you. Good girl. That's your puppy. That's yours. You did that with my help. <laughs> well. Lily says no. <laughs> My puppy. <laughs> okay, Levi, let's go and see if we can get that sock back up. Alex is now able to focus again on Levi to see if she can make him vomit a sock he's suspected of eating. Good boy. Well done. So we better go quickly to the owners now, uh, to Joanna, just because that medication works quite fast. All right. In London, Scott is about to perform Tiberius's routine desexing. Separation is going to be a challenge for his devoted owner, Chris. Is he okay? Yeah, he's absolutely fine. He's all right. How are you? You okay? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's worrying, isn't it? He's fine. He's breathing just fine. All right. He's just having a lovely sleep. Okay, don't worry. It just kind of shocked me a little bit when he was being anesthetized. It just kind of brought back JC. Do you want me to leave the leaves in there? Yeah, you can just leave it all there, mate. Don't worry. That was quite upsetting. You could see there was a tear in his eye, so I had to really remind him he's absolutely fine, he's breathing well. I still think that Chris was happier that he was there rather than fretting upstairs. Oh, that's it. Okay. And three you go. Although, of course, castrating a male dog is very routine for vets and vet nurses, it's not for their owners. And although a very quick procedure, maybe only 20, 30 minutes, it is going to be an anxious wait for Chris. Nathan, you happy with everything? Yeah, all good here. Yeah. Wonderful, thank really you. Lovely. This boy is um, yeah, he's a powerful unit and, um, you know, why would you want him to live his whole life sexually frustrated? All okay still? Okay, that's testicle number two. So I know what you think, Nathan, but I wondered, being that this dog has a bit of separation anxiety, we just bring Chris down for his recovery. Mm -hmm. Just uh, let him snuggle him as he, as he wakes up. Okay, that's done. Let's wake him up. Surgery has gone well for Tiberius. He's a lovely boy. Nathan, can you just stay with him and I'll just go and get Chris. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. Good boy. <laughs> So I just gave the injection, I came straight in here. Hey baby. Okay. And so we can just get this bucket ready because it, it is usually quite quick. At Sash in Sydney, 11-month-old Levi has been given medication to make him vomit because his owner Joanna believes he swallowed a sock. 
start licking his lips and he'll pause a little bit and he'll look a bit <laughs> You'll notice it in a second. If Levi can't bring up the sock and it moves into his intestines, it could cause a fatal blockage. It's not nice, is it? <laughs> Are you sure he's going to be OK? Yeah, yeah, this is normal. He's, he's going okay. to start retching. Oh. Yeah. With the medication that we use to make them vomit, there are very predictable stages that happen after we give that injection. It's all very routine for me, but Joanna seeing this can be quite confronting to see her baby in a state like that. Poor baby, he's standing funny. Oh, <gasps> Whoop, there's the cat food. Oh my God, that's horrible. The medications worked, but there's no sock in the first lot of regurgitated food. Okay, there's more happening. Come on, just take a sock out, man. Oh, is it the sock? That's the sock, isn't it? You reckon? Please tell me that's a sock. That looks like a sock. Oh, thank God. It looks like a leopard print yeah. sock to me. <laughs> you little, little... Oh, baby. Leave that in there. Oh, my God. Poor baby. Next most important question. Do you want your sock back? <laughs> no. No, thank you. No? OK. So we'll take this back and we'll tidy this up and then we'll give him the anti-nausea injection so okay. he feels a bit better and then he's OK to go home after okay. that. So I'm okay, so great. happy thank you. we got that sock up. Thank you so much for Not everything. Not a problem. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> he's had enough, I think. <laughs> he's had a big day. I'm relieved, definitely, that there was a sock. Still don't even know how that's even possible. We've had him since he was eight weeks old and he's brought so much joy to the family. So, yeah, he's, he's another member of the family. He is a child for us. OK. Thank you. Not a problem. Let's go. Good boy. One happy family is leaving Sash. There we go. Good girl. But Alex can't relax just yet. She's now x-raying tiny Lily, anxious to check if she has any more babies still inside her birth canal. What we're looking for is a spine and a skeleton. Ooh, that's a good one, isn't it? In Melbourne, Jacqueline has located what could be a trapped egg inside bearded dragon Zaki. That doesn't go here. The little reptile will need urgent life-saving surgery. So my, that's that one. That is a decent sized oval. That's nearly 20% of the size of her body, and it's an egg that's literally trying to kill her from the inside. The bright colour indicates a large blood vessel running underneath the egg, making surgery extremely risky. That's a big blood vessel for a little lizard, and we don't want to accidentally bump that. With the egg in danger of rotting and spreading deadly poison, Zaki's tiny body is already showing signs of shutting down. What I'm hoping is that we've caught this early enough that we can actually do something about it before it progresses any further. Good job. I'm going to put it under here, make you look very I weird. Know. First, Zaki is getting much needed hydration. Oh, Thank beautiful. You. So, a little bit of fluid will hopefully help you feel a whole lot better. You should start feeling like a new woman. You've got your special mask on. Yeah, special mask. Anti fog for glasses, people. All right. We're going to go get Zaki out of bed. We look like we are nice and sleepy. Do a little bit of a toe squeeze, make sure we're out of it. Yep, we are out for the count. We're getting a little bit into the pointy end now. The calm exterior comes with being a surgeon, but my brain's going through a checklist of what's the best way to get this egg out without leaking poisonous egg contents through the body. Zaki's heart will be constantly monitored throughout the delicate surgery to make sure she remains stable. That sound makes me very happy. But Jacqueline knows that with Zaki's tiny body, there's no room for error. If I hit that blood vessel, not only is Zaki's blood pressure going to drop through the floor, but there is literally a chance she could die before we've done anything to address the whole reason she's here. It's time to go and sort out that nasty egg. Right, so we've just got to move some bits of gut out the way. And we can already see some angry ovaries under here. So that right there. Oh, is that big monster your gallbladder? Are you kidding me?
What we can see here is her skeleton here shines up nice and white. At SASH, Alex is now X-raying Pomeranian Lily to check if she has any more babies that still might be stuck inside her. We're looking for a puppy in like a skeleton with a big head and I don't see anything in there. With Lily given the all clear, it's time to return her to anxious owners Kim and Tuan and also introduce them to her two little miracles. Here she is in her carriage. She's been a very good girl. <laughs> when I saw her about she wanted to push, that's why I tried to have look at the, the phone number and yes. I got called. Yeah. It was good that you acted so quickly because that's what saves their life. Kim and Tuan are so happy to see their little puppies, especially because she was a tricky case. So I think they were just so relieved to see her comfortable, happy, rolling over onto her back and, and her little puppies alive and well. Okay, so she's all done. So there's no more puppies in there and she's able to go home now and just look after her little babies. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Doctor, thank for your help. That's okay, thank not you. a problem. Thank Good you. outcome. We're really happy with you. Yes, <laughs> yes, so lucky. So lucky. Lily, Lily, Lily. Lily. Yeah. I think we had some wins today, yes. Yeah, so we had some positive outcomes. So I'll sleep soundly tonight knowing that Lily's at home looking after her puppies and that Levi's probably sleeping off his small dinner tonight. Bye bye, Lily. <laughs> I'm really happy that she was able to deliver two live puppies, which is an amazing day in emergency. Oh, is that big monster your gallbladder? Are you kidding me? In Melbourne, only minutes into bearded dragon Zaki's egg removal surgery, Jacqueline has made a startling discovery. Opening up Zaki, we've got a little bit of a surprise. I'm looking here and what I'm finding is not actually a giant egg, but a huge gallbladder. And that's a little bit more complicated for me to deal with. So if she's, you know, laying all these eggs when she shouldn't be, and she has a pre-existing problem with her gallbladder, then that might be part of why she's had all these problems. So we're going to take out this ovary on this side to begin with. I'm removing Zaki's reproductive organs so that she doesn't keep laying eggs and draining all of her energy reserves. If you don't have ovaries and a reproductive system, you can't keep having that problem in the future. All right, so that's our reproductive stuff dealt with. Now, the next question is what are we going to do about this here gallbladder because that is enormous and causing problems. Wowzers. Okay, so <laughs> that's our gallbladder. Um, that's about five to eight times larger than it ought to be. It's almost like a person with a football inside of them. <sighs> Everything's just super, super delicate in here. <laughs> So the other thing with the gallbladder is that we want to try and be really careful so that nothing that's in it spills out either. If there's bacteria hiding in the gallbladder, then the last thing we want is to have that kind of material free floating inside of Zaki. Jacqueline is under extra pressure with the gallbladder dangerously close to the liver. I'm really working hard to get this out but every millimetre that I move, there is a risk that something's going to bleed and that could be absolutely life-threatening for Zaki. There we go. Oh, moment of truth. Ha ha. One gallbladder. Oh, Zaki, you made me work for that. I am so relieved right now. That gallbladder put up a fight, but I'm happy to say I won. But now we just got to make sure that there's no surprise bleeding so that we can get her up and out of here. Jacqueline is inserting one stitch to stop a small bleed. So that's really good. I'm really happy with that. That's stopped. And some more to close the skin. Then it's time for Zaki to wake up. Okay, Zaki, last one. Done and done, sweet pea. 
Oh, it's always a nice sense of relief when you uh, finish the procedure. Zaki's future should be a lot brighter and a lot more comfortable without a large unhappy gallbladder. So now we play the waiting game and uh, we've done all we can for Zaki, so the rest is kind of up to her. Reptiles do everything slowly. They go to sleep slowly, they wake up slowly. And the most anxious wait in this entire process is the wait between turning off the anesthetic drugs and waiting for the patient to come back to the room and be aware of us. We have another breath? Another one? I know, I'm asking a lot. That's two. How about another one? That's three. Well done, Zaki girl. We've gotten Zaki through the worst of things. Now we've got to get her covered and feeling better. Zaki will be closely monitored over the next few days before hopefully heading back to her owner. Good girl. Hey. Hi. Hi. He's all good. Yeah. Do you want to come and see him? Yes, yeah. please. Everything's gone well. Come on. Thanks, man. In London, Scott is about to reunite Chris with Tiberius after the faithful companion dog's desexing surgery. Rarely do I allow my clients to go down and see their dogs recover. But again, in this case, Chris is a special case. He is someone who I know will calm the nerves of his dog. They know each other and they're seemingly quite in sync. Yep. <gasps> Are you already awake? Hi! Hi! I'm here. I didn't go. I told you I'm never going to leave you. The relationship between Tiberius and Chris is a real special one. It's actually quite a new relationship, but it's forged through tragedy and then the loss of JC. I think JC is in the background still. I promised him now that I'm, he's never going to be on his... He's not going anywhere now. Forever now. Yeah, I think it was a great thing that he had that time with JC as well. Because I think without JC, I don't know if I would be in this situation. Now the new ring's done, the testosterone levels will go down, and a bit more freedom for both of them. For someone like Chris, who's struggled with mental health issues, to have that little ray of joy or that big ray of joy makes a massive difference to his quality of life. Bye, yeah. beautiful boy. Say thank you, Dr. Scott. Bye, buddy. See you later. See, see you soon. All right, all the best. Okay, take care. Have see a great day. Bye. See ya. Ah. <laughs> Go. Go. Let's Go. Let's Good Let's boy. Go. <laughs> A few days after Jacqueline removed Zaki's dangerously enlarged gallbladder, the bearded dragon is recovering well. Good girl. She'll soon have her stitches out and be ready to go home. And while Chris is still missing his beloved JC, he's not forgotten. And Big Tiberius has fully recovered from surgery, and the pair are now closer than ever. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.